Hello, do you have a movement disorder? Do you have a tremor disorder? Uh, has the doctor told you or a series of doctors or a series of hospitals told you that it's Parkinson's disease? Uh, do you know that movement disorders, and there are many different kinds, and from the studies that I've done, my name is Dr. Lonnie Herman, and the studies that I've done in postgraduate functional neurology school training, that there are probably close to 100 different movement disorders. Only one of them, one of them is called Parkinson's disease. So your movement disorder can be something totally different even though your doctor called it Parkinson's because the doctor that you went to um, either doesn't know how to differentially diagnose and really it doesn't really matter what it's called. Um, hold on, let me hear me out. It doesn't matter because the bottom line is you got to figure out how to stop this movement disorder. You've got to be able to find what causes the breakdown of the nervous system. So whether it's called Parkinson's or called any other kind of movement disorder or any other kind of tremor, the bottom line is in order for you to get better, which won't be with cinnamon or Azelect or any of the other medications that they're gonna prescribe you or dopamine or L-dopa, you've gotta understand that, that you're, you're, something has gotten into your brain to cause it to malfunction. And whether again, it's the the, uh, you know, any Parkinson's Foundation or the, uh, you know, different research organizations out there that are head by, headed uh, by some actors, and I won't mention anybody's name, I'm here to, to talk bad about anybody, but the bottom line is they're probably never going to find the right drug, the right medication, the right amino acid combination of any kind that's going to just fix your movement disorder, the right neurotransmitter combo that's going to fix your movement disorder, because there's a reason why your brain has lost control of its function. And if we say, well, there's a deficiency in dopamine, then you've got to ask the question, why? Why is there a deficiency in dopamine in my brain? So if the deficiency in dopamine is the cause of the tremor disorder, as you want to call it, if the doctors have called you a Parkinson's syndrome, the, 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 the bottom line is, why did that dopamine, why did your brain stop making dopamine in the right levels? That's where my mind goes. Now, if you go back on my YouTube channel, which I'll put a, a link to my longer uh, Parkinson's disease, and I mixed research from Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia into one video, because they all seemed, as I was going through with postgraduate neurochemistry studies and neuroimmunology studies in my postgraduate neurology school training, the, um, the, the research that I did, it was just, it was compelling that, that all the evidence that is found in laboratories around the world, that certain things like mercury and Lyme infection and viruses can be in your brain and cause your brain to malfunction. Malfunction in its production of dopamine and malfunction that it will just not be able to control the body part, right? Even if they could take a biopsy sample and find out there's enough dopamine in the brain. You gotta understand that there are causes of this. So I'll put the link to my other video on this video and underneath the video here. So you click on that and you can watch that. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be very straightforward. That was in some of my early days of, uh, of uh, beginning to understand about this complex uh, neurological neurodegenerative condition, uh, both of these uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But when it comes to uh, Parkinson's, I hold it very dear to my heart because it was a family member in my early years. Uh, you know, we're going back about like 13, 14 years ago where uh, I just knew somebody who I love very dearly who died at the hands of, uh, with a tremor disorder, whether it was Parkinson's or not, and he took the medications and we saw a rapid, very rapid decline. So in the first 40 minutes or so of that video that you can click and, and watch, and, uh, watch uh, when you click on that link, you will, um, you're gonna hear me talk about a lot of different understanding so that you can, you can have a, I tried to make it slow and easy to get into this way of reasoning, this way of understanding about the brain and the body. Okay, but there's a lot of documented research in that video. In this video, I'm gonna share with you about a man who came to my clinic. I'm in South Florida. He came in from another state here in the United States, middle-aged man, and he's got a tremor disorder. You just see the hand as he's sitting and talking to me, the, the hand just doesn't stop moving. And it's driving him insane. Uh, literally, I won't say he's insane, but it's really, you know, serious amount of stress because he can't control his hand. And um, he's tried different things uh, uh, for his health. And he's already had, uh, uh, before I first met with him, which was in October 28th of 2015, he had a, most of the mercury fillings, what we call silver fillings or amalgam fillings that are poisonous to the tissue. And there's a lot of proof about that. And I can even put up 
proof. If you go to on YouTube and just watch two videos, you deserve to see. One of them is called Smoking Teeth Equals Poison Gas. And the other video that you deserve to see is by the University of Calgary in Canada about mercury and the brain. And you will see, uh, you can't deny and any doctor, any of your medical physicians who are, who are, 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 you think are working with you by providing you these medications, if they're telling you that your teeth can't be part of your neurodegenerative disorder, you need to move on and get to somebody who can help you get to the bottom of your causes of your condition. Because if it's a root canal, if it's mercury filling, if it's a crown in your mouth, a gold crown, you need to remove the causes because the dental component to these tremor disorders and other neurological disorders is so obvious when you begin to realize about the research that has been done and the connection of your teeth as one major component that can be causing your neurodegenerative uh, condition, uh, a tremor disorder, movement disorder, or Parkinson's. When this man came in to me, this middle-aged man, the first thing that I found, and now listen, when it comes to movements and controlling movements, there's one part of your brain in particular called the basal ganglia. And the basal ganglia really is in control of keeping you uh, from a rigidity and, and the tremors, okay? The basal ganglia of the brain, another part that helps with, with dopamine production is part of your brainstem, the anterior part of your brainstem, another part is the substantia nigra. You know, you've got to understand that you've got this, this network of, of parts of your brain that help you control certain movements and thoughts and emotions and processes that go on in your body 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The only time you notice that you have a malfunction of a part of your brain is when you have a malfunction with a part of your body. Otherwise, up until then, when there's no symptom, we don't even think about it. So you and, and even some of the, you know, listen, you and your family and friends and loved ones uh, who haven't been through any kind of anatomy and physiology uh, studies in school probably don't know much. I'm not, put, I'm not trying to knock you, I'm just saying, you probably have not studied much about the brain and the body to really grasp an understanding of, of, of what the potential uh, causes of your condition are. That's all. I mean, no harm with that. Okay. When this man first came into my clinic, I found that was stressing his basal ganglia was the computer. He sits in front of a computer all day long. The electricity, the electromagnetic stress from the computer is stressing his brain, causing irregular electronic signals in the brain that will derange the function of that basal ganglia. I also found a terrible level of fluorescent light stress on the basal ganglia. Understand something about fluorescent lights, whether it's the new spiral looking bulbs that screw into the ceiling, or it's the bulb, the spiral bulb that's in the bulb, or it's the skies and it looks like a regular light bulb that you screw in the ceiling, or the long fluorescent tubes. Fluorescent lights, when they slow down, when they're about to die, you see the ends of them start to flicker. That's because it's become quite obvious, that flickering. But when they are prime and ready and brand new lights and you put them into the ceiling, put them into where they go and they turn on, you don't see that flickering. They're, 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 it's, it, it's, it's flickering at such a high pace that your naked eye can't catch it, but they are flickering at a very high pace. And the flickering, the high flashing, into your eye, into your brain. What does it do to your brain? It stresses your brain. It causes your brain to work at a different pace. It causes a, 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 a um, what's the word? It causes, a, it's like an, a, your brain gets off of its normal rhythm from functioning. If it's supposed to work at 10, let's just say it's working at 10 miles an hour. Now all of a sudden it starts working at, at 15 and then two and then 10 and 15 to two and it just keeps moving about. It doesn't keep one steady pace the way it's supposed to. Does that make sense? You understand? A high flickering fluorescent light can damage the function of the brain. It can stress it and impair the function. Get it? We're able to actually figure that out with my kind of unique bioresonance testing skills, hands-on skills. I can find and I can actually make using some incredible research by some Russian and genius Russian and German scientists, we can actually make a remedy. Listen, what I'm going to talk to you about in this video you go to your regular medical doctor and they're going to think it's all a farce. They're going to think whatever they think because all they know is what they were trained in school. Pills, pills, pills. Sentiment, Azelect, period. L-Dopa, period. They don't know any other way of examining the body. They don't know any other way. They can run the nerve testing on you and MRIs and blood tests and all that stuff. That is the regular medical agenda. And you're going to stay in your present state of malfunction. And that is your right to do whatever you want. But for those of you who already step out of the box, Get out of the regular American, American medical system and step out of the box and start to realize that there is a possible way of you to help yourself get well and take away from your brain what's causing 
your malfunction, your tremors, let's get in and start to figure this thing out and start to help you unravel this. So we're able to make a remedy with this incredible uh, causative uh, medical uh, type of remedy work, a causative homeopathy. We can make a remedy that will remove that fluorescent light uh, stress from the basal ganglia. We made a remedy for him, incredible amount of electrical stress and computer stress on the basal ganglia. I also found affecting his basal ganglia directly from a root canal that he had going up, which is under account, it's coming up to the brain, infection in the root canal, hidden, no pain in the tooth, no pain in the jaw, no pain in the gum, infections are hidden. You look up other research. There's other research by uh, a dentist from many, many, many years ago. I'm sorry right now, it escapes me, but you look up, look up these keywords, and I'll put this on the screen here. Look up these keywords on Google, dangers of root canal. The dentist's name was Weston Price, Dr. Weston Price, that's his name. Dangers of root canals. The infections can hide in a tooth and go up to the brain or a body part causing cancer, causing other autoimmune diseases and neurodegenerative diseases. I found that a tooth in his mouth loaded with infection, including Lyme infection, Borrelia, Burgdorferi bacteria, including viruses, including mold, including fungus, including a number of things going up to the brain. That tooth is connected to a blood vessel and a nerve going up here. Even the root canal, when they cut out the nerve and cut out the blood vessel from the tooth and the tooth is dead, it has been proven in decades of research about root canals that the infection can still get out into the saliva and go wherever it wants to go, into the brain and other parts of the body and cause disease in those parts of the body. You understand that? Just take a moment and think about that. Just take a moment and think about that. You go and you look up a chart online that the Germans created back about 50 or 60 years ago. It's called the Meridian Dental Chart. Just look at a tooth, click on a tooth. Look up that, you'll see in some dentist website, you click on a tooth, pick a tooth that you have a root canal or mercury filling and see where it goes in the brain of the body. It's amazing. When I first learned it, I was shocked. Now it's every day in my life that I see these things to help people get well. The Borrelia burgdorferi Lyme infection in this man's basal ganglia. Then I found that in the circle of Willis, which is a blood vessel that surrounds the brain stem and up to the brain, the circle of Willis artery up there, mycoplasma infection. I also found in his, uh, excuse me, right here in the mesenchyme, the embryo tissues, the embryo cells, antibiotic residues, MSG, Epstein-Barr virus, residues of levoquin, fluoroquinolone antibiotics, platyhelminthic worms, parasitic worms inside this blood vessel that brings blood up to the brain. You tell me if you have parasites, fungus, bacteria, living, feeding on a blood vessel going to your brain. Do you think you're gonna be a bit stressed? If you had mosquitoes, you wake up at night with 10,000 mosquitoes biting your arm, you think you're gonna be stressed? I think you would. I think it's gonna wake you up. I think it's gonna irritate you. Do you think that if you got parasites and fungus and bacteria and residues of, of medications and so on and, and vaccines that are up there causing an improper level of blood flow and oxygen flow to the brain that can stress your basal ganglia or your substantia nigra or your cerebellum or your frontal brain or your prefrontal brain? Absolutely, absolutely. We're not gonna have to take biopsies. We can do this with this amazing technology and study that tissue without a biopsy of, taking a biopsy of a blood vessel, which would be physically impossible. We can put our ear right to that blood vessel and listen and find out what's in there, what's stressing it, and remove what's stressing it. This man came back in, 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 that, let between, in that between October 28th and November 30th, today's December 1st of 2015, he had the last mercury filling removed. He didn't get to do the root canal yet. He's doing what he can afford to do at a certain timeline that he can afford to do it. I found with him that there were still electromagnetic stresses, but no fluorescent light stress. He took all the fluorescent lights out of his home and out of his workstation. They're no longer above his head uh, uh, where he works and his home again. But I found with him, this time was really, really, really interesting for me because the substantia nigra of the brain, which also helps to regulate dopamine function and, and controlling movements, the substantia nigra has residues of the meningococcal C vaccine damaging it. It has antibiotic residues damaging it. It has Lyme infection, the Borrelia burgdorferi damaging it. It has MSG, a very large amount of MSG in this part of the brain. It was in other parts of his body last time. It's in this part of the brain, a neurotoxic food, natural flavor chemical that they put into your foods and drinks damaging his brain and the substantia nigra. He has dental mercury amalgam damaging the brain. Uh, stress from the computer damaging the substantia nigra, Lyme infection, Borrelia burgdorferi again damaging that. There were two kinds of Lyme in there. We have uh, fiery tartan chemicals, maybe from his pillow or from his mattress or from his car seat or from his couch. In time, fiery tartan chemicals damaging tissue of the substantia nigra, nanobacteria, 
the diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccine and multiple bacteria and parasites also infecting, damaging the substantia nigra function. Do you think that if you've got bugs and chemicals living in the substantia nigra, damaging it, do you think the substantia nigra can carry out its tasks normally? You tell me. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever had a sore throat before? Have you ever had a sore throat? Have you ever had a red swollen throat where it hurts to swallow? Where you actually try to refrain from swallowing? Have you ever tried to, like, I don't want to swallow because it hurts so much? And you go to a doctor's office or a walk-in clinic, whatever, and they take a cotton swab and they put it on the Petri dish and they say, oh, it's strep infection. It's a strep bacteria. So they give you this antibiotic. You go home, you take it, it goes away. You think it goes away completely. It goes away. And what happens? The throat, you're able to swallow. It's not red. It's not so swollen. Okay? Just imagine that that same infection is in the brain and they don't catch it. Do you think it's going to... It's going to cause a malfunction. It causes swollen throat. You can't swallow. You can't function normally. What happens when it gets up in the brain and you can't function normally? You understand? Doesn't it make sense? I hope it makes sense to you with that analogy there. I also found in his basal ganglia on this round other bacteria that was up there that had to be cleaned out. And it was very interesting from my dental exam, what I did with him the last round, where we found infection in some parts of the jaw. I also found infection in the parotid gland. The parotid gland also, you're talking about in the cheekbone right here, you have the trigeminal nerve which goes in through the ear, behind the ear, into the brainstem, up to the brain. We've got facial features and function, motor and sensory control with the facial nerve, the trigeminal nerve. Understand something. When the parotid gland can be infected from a tooth, it can go up right into that gland and it can house itself there, kind of like a tonsil can house infection. Excuse me, the parotid gland can hold that infection and it can get on the nerve and go right up to the, excuse me, right up to the brain. It turned up in this exam, parasitic flukes and the eggs of these parasites Parasites lay eggs. You kill the parasite, you don't kill the egg, guess what happens? Those eggs hatch, and then what happens? They grow into parasites, and guess what happens? They lay more eggs, and guess what happens? Those eggs hatch, and you kill, try to kill, 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 the, para, you don't kill the parasite, you don't kill the egg, and it just keeps on going. Those infections are going up through the parotid gland, up into the brain. And we're able to actually do some other stimulation to other parts of the brain with his glial cells and, and white blood cells and help him fight these infections, but he's gonna be getting these remedies now to be able to help him help himself he's going to be getting some magnesium and other kind of nutrients to help him but these remedies are specific precision targeted remedies to remove these infections and toxins from the specific tissues that i just mentioned i'm going to keep tracking with him he says he has no other way and he can't stand the hand that doesn't stop the arm that doesn't stop moving so um, as long as he's willing to stick with me, I'm willing to stick with him and clean up these tissues and help him, help himself get well. Um, I know sometimes it takes a little bit longer with some people than others, but again, we have a precision way of diagnosing what's going on, a precision way of removing what those causative agents are that are, that are causing the breakdown in the tissue. You deserve to get well, please. If you're watching this and it's not you and you love someone, you know someone who suffers with Parkinson's or another movement tremor disorder, share this video with just one person. Share this with one person. Subscribe on my YouTube channel here. Scroll down. You can see other videos that I've done here. I've got about 170 plus videos around now. Subscribe on that YouTube channel. And uh, I'm, I'm, I do my best as, as frequent as possible to put videos up here. Sometimes I have to take a little break, but you understand I'm putting my exam findings up at all times so you can really get a, a picture of, of a real view inside the body. And like me on my Facebook page because I do share information there all the time. Okay, And go look through those posts on my Facebook page because there's a lot of awesome uh, research that I find in my clinic and my clinical experience and patient uh, findings and patient testimonials. And it's, it's, it's a great place to, uh, to come and, and visit and read and review and, and share from there also. You want to make an appointment with me to meet with me my number here in my clinic is 954-370-3100. Just ask my lovely assistant. She's very nice. She can help you make an appointment. Don't ask her about the treatments. She can't really tell you too much. She's not a doctor. She is on that phone to help you arrange appointments and flights and, and hotel stays and all of that. And, and so uh, that is mainly her job, okay? So if you've got a question, that is time for us in our consultation, okay? I look forward to helping you. Again, the number is 954 Three seven zero three one zero zero. I look forward to helping you.